Hey, Lindsay. Hey, everybody. My name is Lindsay. I'm one of the primate keepers here at the Oregon Zoo, and these are our ringtail lemurs. Um, I want to thank you guys all for watching today. All of us here at the zoo are um, staying as safe as we can. We're all wearing masks, um, and we are actually practicing our physical distancing with our animals as well. Um, but they seem to get pretty used to the mask pretty quickly. So um, I want to thank you guys again for watching this video. We're going to have a really cool online project you guys can do at the end of this that you can find on the website. Um, and uh, for supporting us um, by watching and learning, that's um, something that we can, the most we can ask for. But we also have a donation pay, uh, button right here on this video. Um, we're still here caring for these guys every day. And I'm really glad to get to share them with you. All right, well, Cadence wants to know, why are these lemurs black and white? Hey, Cadence. So these lemurs are black and white because um, it kind of helps them camouflage. Um, these guys actually do spend a lot of time on the ground, and they kind of go in a big group. So just like a zebra has stripes, these guys have some stripes on their tails to help them kind of blend in with their background. Dylan's asking, what do they eat? Great question, Dylan. Um, these guys eat a variety of fruits and vegetables. They get lettuce every day and they get some primate chow. It's kind of like a dog food, but made especially for lemurs. Grace wants to know how long are their tails? Um, their tails are probably about a foot and a half long, Grace. Um, Elise wants to know what their names are. Okay, so right in the middle right here, this is Aslan. She's the mom. She's 11 years old. And then um, Gizmo is right below her. Um, and she's six years old. And then the one right up top eating, that's um, Holly. And she is uh, seven years old. And everybody out there, we got a couple of comments about sound. Can you just let us know if you're hearing us, us okay? Uh, but we'll keep going on with a question. Ilana, who, who missed it might have before, asked, why are their tails so long? Um, their tails kind of help them with balancing because they spend a lot of time jumping through the trees. They're very good at jumping, so they have to use that tail to kind of balance on those tree branches. And then they grab on with their hands and they can move really quickly throughout the forest. Oliver and Asher are asking, how high can they jump? Oliver and Asher, that's a really great question. Um, I think they can jump maybe about like 10 feet or so. I know some lemurs can actually jump sideways about 30 feet. So, but these guys can't jump quite as far. <laughs> so, so Lindsay, can you tell us a little bit about where ringtail lemurs come from? Yeah, so these guys are all found on the um, island off the coast of Africa called Madagascar. And that is the only place in the whole world where all lemur species are found. So Lachlan wants to know if they can hear, have, if they have any predators. Great question, Lachlan. Um, they actually do have a few predators. Their main uh, wild predator would be the fusa. Um, and it's a carnivore that can kind of climb up the trees and eat them. Um, so they have to be very diligent about staying away from them. But then their other biggest threat is really people. Um, and that's just because we take up a lot of space. And if you can imagine when you live on an island, you don't have a whole lot of space. Um, Astrid is asking, what group of animals are they in? So what are they related to? So these guys are primates, um, but they're not monkeys and they're not apes. So they kind of fall in a very special category called prosimians. And that word is a really big word, but it basically means before monkeys. So these guys were around for millions of years and they evolved separately from monkeys, but they are primates. Ellie is asking if they like to move it, move it. <laughs> I think they like to move it, move it. Actually, sometimes, Ellie, we give them the radio to listen to. Um, and so as enrichment, and it provides a different sort of auditory enrichment for them. So I'm not sure if they have a favorite song, but they definitely get to listen to music. Ashley is asking about their lifespan. How long do they live for? Ashley, they live to be about 27 years old. So all of our girls right here are pretty young. So they got a lot of life left. Quinn is asking uh, about their sense of smell. Great question, Quinn. So these guys have a wet nose, kind of like your dog or cat at home, and that actually helps them with their smell. So these guys are very scent oriented and they actually do scent marking to um, keep their territories known. And so their sense of smell is really great. Lulu is asking how many babies they have at a time and what do you call their babies? Uh, great question, Lulu. So. Um, Ringtail lemurs typically have one, sometimes two babies. Um, more like our red rough lemurs who you'll meet in a little bit. They typically have twins and actually our red rough lemurs are twins. 
Um, and as far as what they're called, I just call them babies, but um, they're just really, they're young um, and they stay with their mom for about eight months. So Olivia wants to know about lemur intelligence. How smart are these lemurs? <laughs> You know, these lemurs are really good at looking for food and, um, you know, foraging for things in the forest and staying with their social groups, but they're not as intelligent as a monkey would as far as puzzle feeders, but they're still pretty smart for what they need to know. And Ellie wants to know what other enrichments do they get? So Ellie, that's a great question. So, you know, they, sometimes they get Kongs, um, just like your dog or cat at home might. Um, they also get perfume, they get music, they get mirrors. They really like looking at themselves in mirrors. Um, and sometimes we'll get, bring them a branch from a different area and they can smell what those other animals smell like and they really get into that. So we have a couple tail questions. Camille wants to know, what does it mean when they walk around with their tails sticking straight up? Um, they're just, uh, when they walk around with their tails straight up, they're basically just um, kind of showing off a little bit, but also they're, they're, it's a very natural position to have it up and walking, but sometimes they actually will use their tails when they get in a disagreement with other lemurs, and they will kind of shake it at the other lemur, kind of being like, uh, this is my area, and this is, I don't want you to come near me, kind of like a warning sign. Okay, and that goes along with Kyle and Mia's question, which is, uh, are there any advantages to having a striped tail like this? Um, so, a great question. Having a striped tail, like I kind of said before, is really just a way to help them camouflage um, in the treetops. And when they're all together in a big group, it kind of helps them look as a larger unit rather than a smaller group. And we'll take this one last question about the ringtail. Zaid wants to know, <laughs> do they stink fight? And what does that mean? They do stink fight. Um, so basically what that means is they will, they have little scent glands um, on their bodies and they will rub those scent glands onto their tail. And then they kind of, like I said, they put their tail up and they shake it at um, the other lemurs and it, it kind of gives off a lot of the, their smell and it's a way for them to kind of be, uh, say, I'm more dominant than you and this is my spot. So they really like to have their own spaces and they will d uh, defend them with their little tails for stink fights. Okay, so Lindsay, we have some other kinds of lemurs that live here too. Are we going to meet them? Yeah, we actually have two more lemurs. We have red rough lemurs, um, and they live with our ringtail lemurs, but the red rough lemurs are actually in charge of everything. So lemurs um, live in a society where uh, the girls or the females are most dominant. And so um, our red rough lemurs are actually the most dominant out of all five lemurs we have. So even though there's more ringtail lemurs, um, they tend to give a little space to those red rough lemurs and they'll probably be coming in here pretty soon. Here they are. Uh -oh. <laughs> so what were we seeing hot. just yeah, so what were we just seeing just then? Um, so we do these kind of encounters when the zoo is open where we have people in here in the exhibit with us. And so the red rough lemurs are very smart and they know that some yummy food is coming and, or that there was yummy food around. I actually have some ice pops for them also. Oh, sorry, there you go. Um, and so the red rough lemurs came running in and they were pretty excited. And so it kind of threw the ringtails off a little bit. And so they kind of were like, oh no, what's happening? Um, a little bit of a surprise, but. Uh, so K Kaden wants to know what these lemurs eat. Caden, these lemurs eat um, the same thing that our uh, ringtail lemurs eat. So they always get lettuce every day and a chow, and then they get a variety of fruits and vegetables. Grapes are their absolute favorite. <laughs> Mia's asking um, what their teeth are like. Okay, so they do have really big canines, kind of like a cat might have, but in the very front of their teeth, they have what's called a tooth comb and all their front teeth on the bottom and the front are very close together and they look just like a comb. And um, they use that to groom their bodies and make sure they're nice and clean. <laughs> we have, oh, Elise wants to know how long are their tongues? Great question, Elise. Um, their tongues are probably about two times as long as their snout. Um, so they do use that tongue to get into flowers and drink some nectar. And part of that is really cool because then they actually spread the pollen around. And just like bees, these guys are pollinators and they help the environment that way. So Gavin's asking if the red ruffed and the ringtail lemurs get along. So like I said before, um, we have all girls here and in lemur world, um, girls are most dominant, even over any male lemur. 
And so um, our lemur uh, calliope is pretty good with the ringtails, but our lemur thalia is definitely the boss. And so she's saying, this is my food, it's my turn, and you should give me some space. Bree wants to know how long have we had lemurs here at the zoo? We've had lemurs here at the zoo, Bree, for just a couple of years. They actually lived in our old mandrel exhibit, um, and now they live here, which used to be our caracal exhibit. Um, and so they've adapted nicely and been coming since they've been here. Liliana wants to know, what's this lemur's name right here? So this lemur right here is Calliope, and that's her sister Thalia, who we talked about being the boss of the group. So she was saying, this is all mine, because um, she wanted to get a, a peek at the ice treats that we made out of their diet. Um, so we'll spread them out a little bit so they can each have one and not be worried about each other. And Lindsay, can you tell us a little bit about lemurs as a family? How many lemurs are there? That's a great question. So lemurs can live in um, groups uh, of as small as five, or they can live into groups as large as into the 70s or 80s. Um, and so, oh, you want to look in the bucket. Here you go. <laughs> These guys are really into their food, so they like to make their own choices sometimes on what they want. Blaine's mm -hmm. asking where the lemurs sleep. Great question, Blaine. So these guys actually have an area in the back where we have bedrooms for them. It has hammocks and blankets and um, lots of places to rest. So overnight, they actually get the choice if they want to go in their bedroom or they want to stay outside. Um, so out here, we have lots of heaters, and so they can choose where they would like to sleep overnight. <laughs> Blaine's asking if their fur is really soft. You know, their fur is really, really soft, but I don't spend a lot of time petting them, Blaine. Um, because they are wild animals, so I try to, I try to give them their own space um, and not interact too much with them um, on that kind of level. But we do um, get to touch them every now and then when they're getting veterinary exams. Laura's asking if they know how to swim. Uh, great question, Laura. They are not really great at swimming. We have a very small pool here, um, and we have a lot of logs in there. So just in case they happen to get in the pool, they always have a way to get out. But they're not great swimmers. <laughs> So Lindsay, can you tell us a little bit about the threats that lemurs face in the wild? Yeah, so they're, these guys are all critically endangered, which means their numbers are dropping drastically. Um, and so most of that is due to um, kind of habitat destruction. So one thing you guys can do at home is to have a really um, good idea of the wildlife in your own backyard and make sure you're supporting them, but also by recycling and saving our planet that way. Um, when you buy wood products, a really great thing to do that actually helps lemurs is if you buy sustainable wood and local wood because um, then we don't have to ship it in from Africa where these guys live. Um, Leonardo was asking, how much do they eat? Leonardo, that is a great question. You know, they eat, um, I get, they get a bucket about this big, um, a little bit smaller and they, it's pretty full and they get that throughout the whole day and we spend a lot of time feeding them. They get sometimes five or six feedings a day all throughout the day because that's how they would spend their time in the wild. They would be foraging for their food and resting. JD is asking, why are their faces black? Great question, JD. So um, these guys just have all different sorts of colors. When, you're, when your face is black and it's really sunny, it kind of helps with the glare so that you can see a little bit better. But just like different animals have different coats, all the different species of lemurs have a different coat style. So ringtail lemurs and red roof lemurs are all lemurs, but they just look a little different. And we had a couple of people asking, do they miss seeing the guests? Uh, is, is their behavior changed at all uh, since the zoo's been closed? Well, I know I personally miss seeing all the guests here at the zoo. I love seeing everyone's faces every day. Um, these guys are part of our animal encounter program, so that we usually do some meet and greets with them. And so I think they've definitely noticed that we don't have as many people coming to meet them and learn about how cool they are. But this is a great way for us to let you see them. And then they get a couple extra guests in here today with our cameraman. <laughs> And we'll take one last question. It's from Madison. She's asking, what kind of noises do they make? Madison, they make a lot of different noises from grunts to howls. Um, sometimes when they get startled or they're alarmed, they make a really loud, like 
almost like a screaming noise. Um, and so actually, the, sometimes when they hear our radios that we wear at the zoo, they um, get a little nerve. They get they sometimes they get nervous when they hear it, so they make that noise. Um, but then they realize it's just the radio, and then they're okay. Well, thank you, Lindsay, for uh, introducing us to the lemurs today. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. Again, um, don't forget to look on the website for that um, activity that you guys can do. It's going to help you learn more about lemurs and how you can help them. Um, and thanks for supporting us all here at the Oregon Zoo. We miss you. Um, and we're staying safe. And um, don't forget there's that donate button if you want to help us out. Um, but otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day and enjoy the lemurs and enjoy the sunshine. Thanks, Lindsay.